football is where we start this Wednesday edition of the Sports Max Zone. Following playoff qualification, second leg fixtures. Tuesday, resulting in aggregate wins for Anguilla and the British Virgin Islands. The second round groups for CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers are now set. Anguilla advancing with a 4-3 penalty shootout win over Turks and Caicos Islands and the British Virgin Islands getting past the US Virgin Islands also on penalties 4-2. This next stage of the World Cup qualifying is set to begin in June of this year. The second round of qualifying will comprise the 30 teams in six groups of five where the top two of each group will move on to the final round of qualifiers where there will be three groups of four teams. So let's see now how the second round groups shape up. So in Group A, we have Honduras, Antigua and the Barbuda, Cuba, Bermuda and the Cayman Islands. In Group B, Costa Rica, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Kitts and Nevis, Grenada, Bahamas. In Group C, Haiti, Curaçao, St. Lucia, Barbados and Aruba. What about Group D? Panama, Nicaragua, Guyana, Montserrat and Belize. In Group E, Jamaica, Guatemala, Dominican Republic, Dominica and the British Virgin Islands. And in Group F, El Salvador, Suriname, Puerto Rico, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Anguilla. Okay, so Lance, we've seen all the different groups. We know which Caribbean countries will be suiting up against the other. I think let's start with the group with uh, the first group, Group A. What do you think about that group and who do you think will be the likely prospects? Of course, we're just going based on form and... And yeah, well, let's, let's first establish that the qualification system this time is completely different and uh, the qualifying landscape is completely different because with Mexico, Canada and the USA hosting the World Cup, those three CONCACAF teams already have automatic spots right. to the CONCACAF, um, from CONCACAF to the World Cup finals. And uh, these uh, World Cup qualifiers in CONCACAF now will provide three other automatic qualifiers and two other potential qualifiers based on intercontinental playoffs. So at the back end of uh, the qualification series, which you just outlined, when you have three groups of four teams, only the group winners will automatically qualify for the World Cup finals. And then the best-placed runners-up, the two best-placed runners-up, we'll will go into intercontinental playoffs to get in. So we could see eight CONCACAF teams playing in the World Cup the expanded World Cup, of course. So um, let's put that on the table first of yeah, all. Yeah, important. Yeah. Um, previously, we had the World Cup qualifying for CONCACAF boiled down to what they call a hexagonal, when there was just one final group of, of teams contesting uh, for three or four automatic spots. And um, they would play each other home and away, round robin, right throughout. But this now is a different, is a different format. And I hear a lot of comments about which teams should be um, comfortable coming out of the initial groups that we just saw. But the groups that we just saw will only provide the top two into the next stage. So it yeah. will be the next stage that will be important. So can we have a look at, at, at Group A then, the first yes. one that you, you, you mentioned? Because um, uh, I think the, the groups are providing an opportunity for some of the lower-ranked teams to muscle up against some of the top teams. Honduras has been uh, a, a perennial hexagonal uh, qualifier in, in World Cup qualifying for this region. Um, so Honduras would have to be favorites here. Antigua and Barbuda have been improving. Bermuda yes. are a fluctuating kind of team, the kind of team that you can't take your eyes off. Um, we remember them upsetting Trinidad and Tobago in a first leg match a couple of years ago. Uh, TNT, of course, <laughs> played them again and, and set the record straight. <laughs> Cayman Islands, a bit of a struggle for them. Cuba is an unknown quantity because uh, their sporting program, especially in football, isn't the same as it was maybe 20 years ago. So, I would But they would want to use this opportunity, yeah, Lance. Yeah, but I would say Honduras would be safe here. And it's a toss-up for the other teams. I quite like Antigua and Barbuda's 
recent form in, in international football. And, uh, but this one is a toss up for, to, see who, to see who would go through with, with Honduras from, from the second round. Yeah, so that's an exciting one. I know one I would be keeping my eyes very, very close on would be the group with Trinidad and Tobago. I know Angus Eve, he, I think the team has been showing a lot of positive signs under coach. Uh, it's unfortunate how it turned out in the CONCACAF Nations League. But for me, I feel like Trinidad and Tobago also has a good shot in that group if they continue on the trajectory that they are currently on. Yeah, uh, Trinidad and Tobago has been a powerhouse in, in Caribbean football and have made their mark in CONCACAF at the CONCACAF level from time to time. And they are in a rebuilding phase. Um, I would like Trinidad and Tobago here to advance with Costa Rica. You know, I remember when we qualified for the World Cup. It's so funny when I think about it now, right, Lance? Because I sit on this show and, of course, Brent Sancho is one of our analysts and I talk to him. But I was just a little girl when we qualified. I remember I was going to Naprima Girls and the entire country, it was like carnival. We were all so happy and celebrating. So I know what it would mean to the country to, of course, experience that feeling again. Yeah, I, I don't think, given their current um, rebuilding phase and the sort of, um, I, I think their, their, their progress in the past couple of years has been incremental. And Brent said it, that there has been improvement, but the pace of their improvement it's too slow. Is, is a bit yeah. slow at the moment. And these World Cup qualifiers are on, are on our doorsteps yeah. starting in June. Um, I don't think this group, though, that they are in, should hold terrors for them. Costa Rica would be favorites there. What but, about Grenada? Well, Grenada are a pretty strong team. They contested the Gold Cup last year, so they have shown themselves as worthy contenders. So they can't be overlooked for sure. No, and but that's if I was they... a betting person, I'd, I'd take TNT to, to survive this because I believe that they're at the stage of an upward trajectory. And while they aren't where they were in the past, I still think that they probably have too much know-how to be upset by some of the other teams that are in that group outside of Costa Rica. Yeah, and what's so important is I like to go on experience, right? I know it's a different group of players, but when you look at this group, Group B, Costa Rica and Trinidad and Tobago are the only two teams that have been to the World Cup from this group. So just having the know-how and gives them an advantage. Well, I'll say a psychological advantage because it's a new set of players. Yeah, and you know, I, when it comes to sports, self-belief goes a very long way. So when you have a team like Trinidad and Tobago playing, let's say, a Grenada, there is something about the, the aura of a Trinidad and Tobago that will give those players the confidence that they can handle, handle the Grenadians. Not that um, the Grenadians can't beat them because I believe, it, given how the... The, the, the current quality of the Trinidad and Tobago team is, they can't take these teams for granted. But I, I believe that when you're playing sport and you have a belief and you have or you represent a, a body that has been there before and um, has, has beaten the current opposition before, it somehow trickles into your psyche yeah. that you can handle this. So I think self-belief is one of the things that TNT could use and against seen... teams like Grenada and so on. But... I, I think this is a reasonably tight group, yes. um, but I'd still take TNT and Costa Rica here. Yeah, and I've seen that confidence in the TNT setup grow. Let's move across now, Lance, to Group C as we try to get through as much of the groups as we can. Group C. All right, so this one looks mouth-watering. Haiti, Curacao, St. Lucia, Barbados and Aruba. Are you going for your second home, Barbados? <laughs> Barbados is struggling at the moment. <laughs> their, their world rankings is somewhere down 160 or so. Um, the Curacao and Haiti would be the favorite teams here for sure. The last time we had a Caribbean championship, Curacao were champions. And they have a lot of players who are playing in the Dutch league and so on. So they are using a lot of players who are not based in Curacao in pretty much the same way that the reggae boys use a lot of players who are yeah. based outside of the country. Um, Haiti is always a formidable opponent when it comes to this um, sort of level of, of qualifying. Um, they did contest one World Cup before in 1974, Haiti. So it's not new for them to be playing World Cup football. Uh, they haven't been back to that level since, though. But Haiti and Curacao, I would think, are the teams to watch here. St. Lucia just started a semi-pro league um, a couple of weeks ago in the country. And uh, 
there is a hope that St. Lucia's football will begin to rebuild, although but a, lot of, a lot of a lot of their key players are playing in Jamaica and uh, Antigua and Barbuda and so on, a couple in Europe as well. So St. Lucia is, is a team that you'd have to watch, but Haiti and Curacao, based on current standards, would be the teams that I would look out for here. Yeah, all right. Let's move across to Group D now. So in Group D, we have Panama, Nicaragua, Guyana, Montserrat, and Belize lands. The favorites for this one, do you think Belize would be one of those? No, Belize are at the bottom of the barrel. Um, Panama would be favorites here for sure. Um, Guyana just qualified from, or got promoted from League B to League A in uh, the CONCACAF Nations League, and they're on the improve. Amari Glasgow, they're exciting 20-year-old yeah. We spoke about him yesterday in Yeah, Zona yeah because he won two awards at the CONCACAF Nations League. He was a Golden Boot winner, and he was also the winner of the Best Young Player Award. And he celebrated that with two goals yesterday for the Guyanese against Cambodia in a FIFA series uh, a quadrangular series going on or a triangular series going on in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I just so I think Guyana are on the improve. I don't think Nicaragua um, should underestimate them or, or Panama for that matter. Yeah. Um, Jamal Shabazz, a Trinidad and Tobago national, coach. is coach of the Guyana team and he has done a very good job with them. I think this is his fourth stint as the Guyana, Guyana Jaguars coach. Golden Jaguars coach. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Ghana is an improving team. I just want to add, as you say, improving team. They're an improving team across all sports. Because if you notice, uh, and I don't mean to bring cricket into this discussion, but it's so essential that I make the point because Ghana's cricket has improved massively. We spoke about that, uh, both the men and the women. I had recently, um, we spoke about golf on In Case You Missed It, like different aspects of... Squash. Squash, squash. Yeah. So there's so many different sports lands that it makes me wonder what's going on in the sport fraternity in Ghana because there has been a massive shakeup and things are well, some, some years ago they found oil. So, so it has, the oil, it, it has, it has oil means money. The country. I always say on this show <laughs> when I ask my guest questions is that, so how are you going to get money? Because without money, we can't run the sport. Yes. I, I think I understand. Oil, money, yeah. sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ghana is on the improve. You know, I, <laughs> I, I like this Guyanese team and I like where they're heading with, with the coach, Jamal Shabazz. Um, when they get back from Saudi Arabia, we're likely to have a discussion with him. Okay. Jamal Shabazz, talk to him on the Sports Night Zone about Ghana's growth in football in the past year. But they also have used some players who are playing in the leagues in England as well. So the Ghana team that we are seeing now is an improved product from the one that we would have seen five or six years ago. And... Um, I think Ghana is a team to watch at this stage. When If they get past here, the third and final qualifying round will be tough for all these teams. But this second round stage, I think, is a stage that the Guyanese can target and do well in. All right, we're going to go to my second home now. Let's see. Jamaica is in this group. We have Jamaica, Guatemala, Dominican Republic, Dominica, and British Virgin Islands. Jamaica, we have seen massive improvement again, Lance, despite all the off-the-field issues. The last couple of matches we saw from Jamaica winning that third-place medal, of course, CONCACAF Nations League. I think it's exactly what they needed as they get ready for this CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers. Their confidence is up. They have goal scorers from different players. One of the points coach mentioned is that now he has these weapons that he can use uh, when he wants his team is not as predictable as before and I think that is such an important point to make as we get ready for this I think Jamaica will be one of my favorites from this group What say you and Guatemala as well? Yeah, the, the, they are the top teams for sure The Dominican Republic is not a team that you can underestimate Dominica and the British Virgin Islands are below this current level here so this crowd um, I think would be a little bit too much for Dominica and the British Virgin Islands. The Dominican Republic can't be underestimated, but Guatemala and uh, Jamaica are the big guns here. Jamaica are currently a top five CONCACAF ranked team. And if we think of a possible eight teams qualifying from CONCACAF to the World Cup Finals in 2026, then you have to think that Jamaica should be one of them. Yeah. And um, I think it would be hugely disappointing for Coach Halgrimson and Jamaica's reggae uh, football fans if the Jamaicans miss out on this one. You know, earlier today when the GF have posted the graphic, which they do because their their social media is very, very active, right? The the comments that I saw, Lance, are so harsh. The people were literally saying that, you know, it's it's a no-go for Jamaica. Like, they have to 
to qualify, else they should do something else. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's what I referenced earlier on when I thought that there is a lot of comment about the groups that people are seeing here. And it's almost as if people think that if they win this group, they qualify They're for in. the World yeah. Cup. So I'm and glad you clarified. And, and that's not so. This is the first stage of uh, the, the qualifying. It's the second round. It's the third round that will be important. The top two teams in each of these groups will qualify for the third round, three groups of four, and only the group winners will qualify directly to the World Cup after that. And then the two best runners-up place teams will get, get into an intercontinental playoff. Yeah. All right. Well, of course, we have a lot of exciting football to look forward to. And one of the things is we're never short on sport, Lance. We're going to just look at Group F quickly. Um, let's see who you think will be the favorites for this one. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I have to ask about them because, of course, new president and all these different things happening. Does this make their football any better? Yeah, well, history doesn't support... Um some of these teams going deep into the World Cup qualifying. El Salvador, for sure, are perennial contenders in the hexagonal when it was uh, down to the last eight. Um, Suriname has been one of the top teams in the Caribbean Football Union for quite some time. So I would put El Salvador and Suriname ahead of Puerto Rico, SPG and Anguilla, for sure, for this, for this, for this group F. Yeah. All right, Lance. Well, of course, as I said, we have a lot of football to look forward to and we will be doing our very best here to do the build up, the pre game shows, the previews, the post game shows and all of that. So you can keep it locked to Sportsmax. We're going to take a quick break and come back. We have a lot more to talk here on the Sportsmax zone. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 